I am not a handyman. If I can't fix something by hitting it, rebooting it, or blowing on it, I'm sunk. But am I actually fixing the problem? Hi there everyone, Julian here for DNews from YouTube Space LA. We've all done it, don't act like you haven't. The remote doesn't work, the fridge makes a weird noise, the jukebox won't play, so you give it a quick smack, and then, almost magically, everything's fixed for about 30 minutes. What's happening here? Well, you're probably not actually a wizard with dominion over appliances, but because you can't see what's happening inside, it certainly feels that way. More than likely, there's a loose wire or a bad solder, and by giving it a good thump, you've knocked it back into place, and the machine is functioning like it was designed to again. But odds are good the problem will come back. Taking something apart to clean it and check all the connections may not be as fast or satisfying as giving it a good smack, but it's certainly more permanent. So, what about other techniques? Like, blowing on something. Specifically, video game cartridges. I grew up with an NES, and when it started acting up, I vividly remember pulling out the cartridge, blowing on the 72 copper pins, and inserting it again, and it worked like a charm. Or at least it felt that way. But actually, what I was doing was making the problem worse. Copper tarnishes when it's exposed to oxygen, something you're familiar with if you've ever heard of the Statue of Liberty. Moisture from your breath with oxygen dissolved in it can prolong the O2's contact with the pins, tarnishing them faster and making it harder for the system to read the cartridge. If you really want to clean the pins, it's recommended to use isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab to dissolve and soak up any grease. If the pins are oxidized, a pencil eraser can rub off the patina and the underlying copper should be shiny and conductive. But why do we all keep blowing into our copies of Duck Hunt? Well, just the act of reseeding the cartridge probably fixed the problem, but we attributed it to our sweet blowing skills because, well, kids are kind of dumb sometimes. All right, so you can break your precious delicate electronics by hitting them or even just blowing on them, but surely turning them on and off again doesn't actually do anything, does it? Yeah, it does. It's a great equalizer. If your computer's running slow, it could be a program is hoarding memory after running for a long time. Closing the program or rebooting the system entirely will free up that memory for other processes. Modern software is extremely complex, and the more complex something is, the more opportunities it has to go wrong. Sometimes there's a low-level software error and the program can't go on without restarting from zero. It might not even be the software's fault, just a random event like a power glitch that turns what should be a zero into a one. A simple reboot and it's back in action. It works often, but it won't fix corrupted software or failing hardware. It's quick and easy, and it's a lot easier than pulling apart your whole computer. That's why usually the IT guy's first question will be, have you tried turning it off and turning it on again? So, shutting down your router might fix your Wi-Fi so you can access the series of tubes beyond it called the internet. Trace explains exactly how the internet works down here. Are there any other quirky mysteries you want explained? Let us know in the comments, and I'll see you next time on DNews.